Hi everyone, my name's James Ivey. I'm Mike Thornton. And we are from Pro Tools Expert, and we are here down in London Excel at the final day, day three of BVE 2017. It's our end of day wrap up type thing. Yeah, end of show wrap up even. Yeah. Um, so we thought we'd just share with you a couple of the things that we've seen at the show today, some of the, the cool stuff that you may well want to go and check out later online, or you may well see on the kind of the individual videos, if you like, that we've shot during the show. Yeah. So, Mike. Uh, your first um, highlight of day three. Oh, it has to be the uh, Sennheiser Ambio. Um, I can't act... think why. <laughs> no, I'm mean, Ambisonics. I mean, I've been working with Ambisonics for years and years. I did demo recordings for Soundfield back in the in the 80s, and at last with VR, we've got something that Ambisonics was just made for. And the guys at Sennheiser have made this really lovely microphone. It's so user friendly. I mean, the great problem we had with a sound field bike is it really wasn't an ideal device to take out on in the field. They weren't built for the road, were no. they? No. Um, and so the Sennheiser Ambio, it's a proper tetrahedral microphone array, uh, A format coming out the back, uh, record it into whatever recorder you want, then you've got a free plug-in with the uh, A format to B format converter, and once you're in B format, the world is your oyster. Uh, I was. We had a demo there where they were using the noise uh, makers uh, plug-in to turn it into binaural, and I was listening to the the whole process in binaural. Uh, very very clever. Very cost effective. Fifteen hundred quid for a, 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 an Ambisonics microphone that is got comes with a Ryko shock mount brilliant little device so definitely that's my first one what about you james what's your first one um i think mine has got to be very much the other the low tech end of things and the logic keyboards um one of the things that most annoys me in the world is my memory who are you yeah um <laughs> and keyboard overlays things like that are great but the new logic keyboard for pc as i now am kind of nearly a PC user. Um, <gasps> it's backlit, it's just really nice and solid, feels like a keyboard. As much as I love MacBook Pros and things like that, the idea of actually being able to type on a proper keyboard and having it all laid out and it's backlit and it's lovely, and it's two USB ports, so that means it's powered, so I can actually plug drives and uh, eye locks. Because it's actually one of them is a hub. Yeah, it is a hub. What they've done with, unlike the, the Apple keyboards, you've got the keyboard, which is one USB lead, and you, the other one is the hub for the sockets on the back, so they're completely separate. The reason I know this is because I've got one of the Pro Tools Mac ones sat on my, my desktop at the moment, and I'm going to be doing a shootout between the Logic Keyboard backlit Pro Tools keyboard and the Editor's Keys backlit Pro Tools keyboard. So something to watch out on the site. But yeah, very interesting. It, it's awesome. I love it. Um, and they're not having it back. So Mike, what is your second highlight of day three? Well, my second highlight is something that's much more nerdy, uh, not sexy at all. Pardon, sorry, guys, at new gen, but it's the new uh, AMB audio management uh, processor plugin, uh, what well, application from the guys at new gen. Really, uh, we had the LMB, which was uh, batch processing for loudness. I can see James going to sleep already because I've managed done the loudness work. Um, but the thing about the, this new uh, AMB is audio management because it allows you to do batch processing for um, loudness, but also for up mixing. So they've taken some of the Halo uh, algorithms and put that in. It's much speedier. They basically, you can have it analyzing files for eight, 16 at a time. And so for large premises, large facilities doing legacy content, or maybe repurposing lots of content, so broadcast content that needs to be repurposed for uh, web-based content to be able to repurpose that. It'll take what's MXF content, so stuff that's video, audio, all wrapped up, pull the audio out, process it, put it back in the wrapper. Yeah, it's as I say, not sexy, but it's an incredibly key part of a, a workflow tool that we need in our in our audio post process. And as someone who's been doing a lot of kind of ingest work recently, I can't think where that would have been. <laughs> um, 
some kind of automation automation system that does that is just going to speed up our workflow, be it post or music, because quite, quite frankly, us music boys do have to get content in from time to time. It's not all recorded in our own facilities or our own studios. So James, what about, what's your other highlight from today? Um, I think mine has to be um, a company. It's not really a product as such. It's more a kind of a process, smart studios. Oh, um, yes. I'm looking slightly more long term, uh, more news to follow on that, I guess, at some point. <laughs> but um, as someone who is potentially looking to build a new facility, build a new space, move house, all that sort of stuff, cost effective studio building has got to be the way forward. Um, we all complain about acoustics and our, sp our workspaces and all that sort of stuff. And sometimes there's no getting around. You, have, you are limited by the space you have. But these guys are building kind of purpose built building blocks for studios. Almost. I mean, it, I just always love the sort of Huff House. Now, you know, if you're a Grand Designs <laughs> uh, fan here in the UK, um, then you'll understand Huff Houses essentially are a house that's built on the factory floor, modular. You build a wall panel. It's fully pre-wired. It comes fully painted. Yeah, second fix, it's, all the yeah, plug, the plug sockets are and everything All the already. decoration is all done in the factory. So the house is built in about seven days, lock, stock, and barrel. And it seems this that- This is the studio yeah. equivalent, yeah. Um, to the point where the modules are eight foot by a meter, is it a meter wide yeah. by eight foot tall? Um, very, very flexible system. Uh, just genius. And I, I thought there's definitely some legs in kind of designing my system, my potential new studio, who knows. Um, the guys are based in Dublin. I just so happen to be out in Dublin in a couple of months. So I think there's going to be a, I mean, what are the chances? A factory tour coming up, but really, really interesting. Um, don't think of this as building a studio by numbers. There's still a certain amount of uh, individuality, mm. uh, customization options, but this is a way to get a really great sounding studio without the Without the, without the permanency of investment, they were saying that um, if you were to have to tear down, for lack of a better phrase, yeah. you're looking at 50% return on investment that you can apply into the next build. Because you can di effectively dismantle it and then re rebuild, use half of it in your new facility. Yeah. You're only going to have to spend so much money in your new facility. So because it's modular, you can dismantle it, yeah. transport it, rebuild it. Yes, there'll be a bit of money needing spent on building it again in again yeah. but it's not start from scratch throw it all away so in places where you might be on short term leases it means you can get a real return on investment on your studio treatment your isolation your acoustics the whole lot and where at the moment pound for pound bang for buck is so important um, yes I was very lucky with my, my current studio that uh, if you like the investment was done by somebody else um, thanks, Avid. <laughs> um, but look, moving forward, again, to use an Avidism, uh, I, I think I'm going to have to be a lot more uh, aware of the purse strings, should we say. So I think this is definitely big tick in the, the money box for savings for studio builders and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, you basically give them an empty void of a space and they will do all the design, the development, the manufacture of all the panels. The panels are designed and modulized so that you can actually get it in silly little lifts and bring it up and get it into the building around tight corners. So lots of places here in London, a lot of well, our London, London Soho is yeah. a, a, a delivery nightmare. Yeah. As as man who has driven white van mm -hmm. for a living, uh, Soho is a, an absolute nightmare for parking, for delivery, all that sort of stuff. Um, they've thought about it. It's all moduli modularized, modularized, yeah. who knows? Um, very, <laughs> very cool. More to follow on this one. Certainly, as, as my kind of plans and um, and future develops, as it were. But no, very, very cool. Really good to talk to those guys. So yeah, more to follow. Well, there you go. That was BVE 2017. Um, we came, we saw, we rocked. Can you rock a broadcast show? Oh, yes. We can this time. But for now, I've been James from Pro Tools Expert. I've been Mike Thornton from Pro Tools Expert. And we will see you again soon for some more Gear Talk.